What is collective intelligence? And I would like to go through a definition and visualize how that works to figure out what are some of the um, troubles and paradoxes that we're going to encounter as artificial intelligence becomes the means of collective intelligence. So first, let me read you the definition from Wikipedia. Collective intelligence is shared or group intelligence that emerges from the collaboration, collective efforts, and competition of many individuals, and it appears in consensus decision-making. And here's how I'm visualizing this. So we've got a bunch of real-world data and real-world people who are collaborating back and forth in various ways to produce some pool of information. And I tend to think of this as an academic field, like I'm an economist, what are the definitions of um, what's within the field of economics, of what we consider valid, how do we determine validity in our community, and that community produces this sort of pot of knowledge, which includes facts, and it also includes models, which relate the facts to each other, and which make those that set of information more useful for actual use. Now, use is actually going to be part of intelligence. It's not just generating a pool of information. It's also going to be figuring out how to use that information to solve problems in the real world. So you kind of need tags and organization of this information to make it useful in the moment. Now, in that definition, you noticed consensus decision-making. So I want to add to this use a group element where the group is trying to decide what to do or how to use this information. And you need that group sort of giving input. So it's not just the uh, generation of knowledge, it's also the way you use that knowledge that has groups of people involved. And we note that this group and this group can be the same group of people or different groups of people, um, but, but the key here is collective or group. Now, at this point, I think it's going to be helpful for us to think about intelligence of just individual people because that will map onto this, and we're actually going to map that onto thinking about artificial intelligence as a specific robot um, just to, to personify it a little bit, where in the future we might have different options for artificial intelligence, and we have to figure out which one do we actually trust uh, to help us make decisions, which one do we trust for group decisions, all of that. And so we have to know which of these artificial intelligences is more intelligent. All right, so let's consider four different people here where we have the person who's not that intelligent, we have three people who are very intelligent, they have high processing power, and of course we, we note that this does not just mean that this person has a list of facts that they can recite anytime you ask them, it means that they're good problem solvers, they're good at figuring out what types of information is most relevant to a problem, what types of information and what types of models can be used to create new knowledge. A lot of what we consider as intelligence in human beings really has to do with the interface of the pool of the information in their head, which might include how they organize it, like how do they flag and tag that huge set of facts and models in their head, but also how do they translate that into use. That's really key with intelligence. So here we have three people that we might say have equal processing power in their minds for collecting knowledge and using knowledge creatively to solve problems. But there's a difference between these three people. Over here we have someone who is smart but selfish. Like, if you give them a task to, to solve this problem, they may solve it as long as it doesn't conflict with their own interests. And if it does conflict with their own interests, they're going to sort of finagle things in their own interest and perhaps lie or omit the information that they should have done that would serve uh, the greater population, say. So they use their intelligence for their own good. Now, you might be asking, how does this relate to intelligence? Intelligence isn't about morality, it's not about, um, it's not about justice, but I do think it relates and we'll come to this in a second. This second person here is smart but manipulative. And by that, we mean that the person appears to be very just, they appear to be considering the negative consequences of their choices, all of that. But in fact, behind the scenes in their head, they're really just trying to um, 
enact their own will. So they're essentially selfish, but they're really good at playing it off like they're not. And of course, you might be thinking already about artificial intelligence, um, but, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. So here we have the smart person who is smart, but they're also really good at thinking of unintended consequences and sort of the broader implications of any decision that they may be making. Now with people, we might actually think each of these three are equally intelligent. But when it comes to collective intelligence, we might have a different uh, perspective. All right, so now with collective intelligence, the quality of this intelligence is going to depend on both uh, mechanisms. The mechanism that takes a bunch of different people and aligns their incentives such that they're more aligned to produce valid information, to weed out invalid information. And academic communities, of course, try to do this. They, they have ways of checking each other, all of that. So this is part of collective intelligence, is getting information and, and models from the people to some sort of uh, shared, you can think of this as a shared information store brain, but then in figuring out how do you use this information, the use is also serving a group of people. And that group of people um, may have conflicting uh, interests and desires. And so the use here has to sort of figure out how do I balance the, the different perspectives when they are in conflict? How do I figure out where the perspectives are not in conflict? And how do I apply this knowledge for use for this purpose. Now, one problem we have here is that this is actually a difficult or maybe even impossible task. Like Arrow's impossibility theorem basically proved that there's no perfect voting system. Like you can prove that mathematically. I have another video on Arrow's impossibility theorem, which I'll link to below. But um, coming up with consensus about how to use information in practice, this is essentially a governance problem. And governance is hard, governance is weird. Um, and so you have this element that is going to bring in justice, it's going to bring in manipulation. If you study voting, you realize there's lots of different ways of manipulating votes by setting the agenda of how you vote. And all of that is going to come into play with collective intelligence as we try to figure out how we translate a body of information into actual effective use. So let's return to our definition of collective intelligence and flesh out a couple of the other elements. The consensus decision-making part of this relates to this, consensus decision-making. But what about the competition and collaboration? And in reality, that's going to be at play both over here with these people and also over here. So competition, of course, in voting systems or in coming up with a collective opinion, you're going to have competition between groups whose interests differ. How does competition come up over here, though? And, of course, this, this has to do with the incentives in a community that's job it is to generate knowledge, to generate information. So in academic communities, there is competition for the top seats on journal boards, in journalism, where, uh, you know, the journalistic communities are also part of what's over here. There's competition for the biggest prizes in the journalism world or the best jobs in journalism. So that competition actually incentivizes these people to do better work according to the rules of this community. Now, can financial interests come in and influence the rules of the community, the social dynamics of the community? Um, yeah, they certainly can, and that's one of the problems I think we're wrestling with, both with artificial intelligence and more generally, is how, do, how does money come in and have its say in this process in a way that is not necessarily democratic or great for the population. But what I'm saying here is that competition structures incentives that will either create a, a high quality pool of information and pool of models or a, 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 a body of knowledge that is perhaps biased in certain ways. So if I were going to add something to this definition, I think I would add incentives because over here, the incentives are the competition part and they're also the collaboration part. And you can't always separate competition from collaboration, um, which is another video, I won't explain that here. Another word in this definition is emerges. So a lot of this happens naturally, um, even though we're intentional about structuring the incentives of say an artificial intelligence system for collective intelligence. 
intelligence. A lot of it will happen naturally as people interact with each other, learn from each other, explain ideas. And that natural interaction between people will, will play a role in the quality of this collective intelligence. So that's collective intelligence in a nutshell. I'll put some useful links below. In particular, there's the Collective Intelligence Project, which is doing research on this type of stuff. And I plan to do some videos in this realm, so I'll post relevant links below for you to follow.